I believe that we are each capable of far more than we ever knew was possible. I believe that we are each a gold mine of unrealized potential. And we are surrounded every moment of the day by opportunities to access that potential. Opportunities to step beyond what's been done before, to look at old things in a new way. Entrepreneurs everywhere need to hear this message. It's the what if message. Mike Rayburn is entertaining, educational, empowering. Oh, and I've just had the privilege to see Mike Rayburn perform. What a fantastic session it was. It was at a strong message, uh, very, very funny, and man, can he play guitar. <laughs> Creativity and left everybody just standing and clapping for the rest of the meeting. Just saw Mike and MDRT and the message was phenomenal. Not only that, but he's entertaining. But to me it was about change. It wasn't managing change, it was creating change. How do we access that potential? How do you take the level of success which every one of you has achieved at this point and turn around and look at that as merely a launching pad for what's next? When you ask the question, what if, in a positive way, you open up the possibilities every time. What if we could do that? What would it look like? I know, it can't, but what if we could? Because if there's nothing on the line, at that moment, absolutely anything is possible. And that's where we want to start. Let's set aside the old thinking, step into the new and say, hey, what if we could do that? How would it work? What if we could make this? I know this is crazy, but what if it happened? Because questions define the way we think. When we're willing to make this a habit to where you just become that possibility thinker, asking those kind of what if kind of questions, you've reprogrammed your brain to where you are walking through life no longer looking for reasons you can't. As your default, you're looking for reasons you can. If I had to say that there is a common denominator with every organization I present for, and you guys are dealing with it as much more than anyone, it's change. We hear it all the time. We're trying to manage change, right? Changing the economy, changing technology. You guys have had more changes in regulations and law from Dodd-Frank and everything else going on, and now there's more coming down the pike, right? Peter Drucker summed up my philosophy perfectly. He said, managing change is not only stupid, it's dangerous. The only way to manage change is to create change. And now my words, to be the ones who step out and define the curve rather than follow it. The solutions you're coming up with are yours. They're a product of your abilities and experiences or those of your team. When you then act on them, you're now doing something no one else would have done. This is how you access and honor the abilities that you have on your team. And it is literally where innovation begins. Every major accomplishment, achievement, or victory in human history started in one way or another with a what-if question. So why aren't we asking this regularly? It's so powerful. Now, the way I sort of found my way into this dealing with change and trying to figure this out, I used to play in these clubs. People would yell all these requests at the same time. I had a cutoff time. I had to fit them in, and it wouldn't work. And I thought, but what if it could? And a wild idea hit me. I put them together. Green Acres is a place to be. Farm living is a life for me. Land spreading out so far and wide. I love you, Hooterville. Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside. Do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam. I am. What I'm teaching is artistic principles, but in a business or a life context. If you want your people to be innovative, if you want them to think with a fresh new mindset, why bring in the same old speaker with PowerPoint? I mean, shoot, if you're gonna be innovative, be innovative. I want you to write music that you can't play. Write music that you can't play. Obviously a metaphor, so let's say the same thing in non-musical terms. Set goals that don't exist. Set goals that don't exist. Uh, 
a goal that exists. If you set a goal for a 10% increase over a year, however you would measure that, it's a good goal, but to me it exists. Because you can probably see how to get there even if you can't do it yet. Work harder, longer, hire help, be more productive. And most of our goals are that way, stepwise. But I'm about trying to affect exponential change because I've just seen it happen too often not to. So whatever time frame you set goals, try this. Set one goal. Come either individually or just talk to your team about it. Set one goal where when you come up with a goal, don't start with what's possible. Start with what's cool. What's right? What's the dream case scenario? People say, well, in a perfect world, I would, yes, in a perfect world, you would what? Why is that not the goal? Oh, well, because it's impossible. And we, and we kill it before it comes out of our mouths. Here's the test to know you have the goal I'm thinking about. It takes courage to think it. The kind of goal that completes this phrase. Okay, this is nuts, but I'm gonna. What is it that's nuts, but you're gonna do it anyway? Three things you gotta do with that goal. Number one, you gotta write it down. Can't just think about it. Number two, you gotta commit to it. Get your heart in there. This is gonna happen. I don't know how, but this is gonna happen. This is what great leaders do, by the way. Great leaders get in front of the whole group and say, folks, here's where we're going. I don't know how to get there, but let's get started. Kennedy said, we're gonna put a man on the moon by the end of the decade, and when he said it, not only did the technology not exist, it was four or five steps from existing. It exists and we did it because he said, we're going to. That phenomenon doesn't just work for Kennedy, it works for anybody. And number three, so you will write it down, you're gonna to commit to it. Number three, you're gonna take physical action on it the moment you write it down. I think when we imagine change, we think of something that didn't exist, someone thinks it up, they make it, and now it does. And sometimes that's the case. But haven't you noticed that some of the most profound and effective changes in where it is truly your opportunity is when someone takes something that's in front of everyone and is willing to just look at it and use it a little differently, to take a different perspective on it, or to take some things, a collection of things that were all there in front of everyone, but they align them a little differently, package them a little differently, put it in a little differently, and it changes everything. Example. Apple's iPod, people don't even think about the iPod anymore. It's an afterthought on an iPhone. But when the iPod came out, it changed everything. Not just the entire consumer electronics industry, which it did. It changed the entire entertainment industry. We buy and sell music on iTunes single-handedly because of the iPod. That is disruption. So it's something brand new, right? Wrong. The day the iPod came out, it was nothing more than MP3 technology, which had existed for at least 10 years beforehand. Every major consumer electronics company had it. Sony, Toshiba, Yamaha, Nakamichi, all of them had it. The difference is, Apple was willing to say, what if? What if we take this technology? Okay, cool. We combine it, we make this smaller, there's a little dial, put these little earphones that don't fit. Um, they're better now. And, and when they did, it changed everything. And what I'm telling you is I genuinely believe, I wouldn't be here if I did not believe this, those type of opportunities exist in front of all of us every day. We just have to be willing to unearth them. And one great way to do that is asking the question, what if? We're taking a huge problem and we're poking fun at it. We are making fun of the problem. We are bringing levity to the problem, and I mean to do that. And the reason I say to do that is, I don't know if you've noticed, but that's not what we as human beings tend to do with problems. You know what we do? We deify them. We take problems, we set them on pedestals, and worship them. It drives me crazy. As soon as there's a problem, watch what happens. Watch the email chain about the problem. Watch, I wrote, oh, have you heard about the problem? Oh, I've heard about the problem. Oh, gosh, there's a problem. Yes, it's such a problem. It's a problem. There's a, pro there's a meeting about the problem and a memo about the problem and a meeting about the memo about the problem, okay? And you've never experienced that, of course, but I'm not saying to diminish the importance of solving it. To the contrary, it is impossible to make fun of something without standing outside of it. The very act of making a joke about something causes a distance, a buffer, a new and better perspective because of that distance, and I will guarantee you a better solution every time. We're taking this problem, and we're intentionally, the moment it happens, not looking at it as a problem. We're saying, hey, where's the opportunity in this? I mean, these requests that I hated, took me a while to figure it out, 
but they were there to deliver to me everything I wanted. Made me a comedian, made me a professional speaker. Everything I love about my career came from bad requests. It just didn't look that way in the beginning. So let me ask you this. Earlier on, I asked you to think about whatever it is that you dread, that you avoid, whatever that cloud is in your life, that's whatever's holding you or your business back. What if there's something good about that? What would it be? I know there's probably not, but what if there was? Or what if there's an opportunity in it in some way? Or maybe it's a personal thing, a personal issue. We all got those, right? What if by overcoming it, it gave you an ability that made you unstoppable? What's it look like on the other side of that? That's why we get problems, is to get us to those new places in life, the new levels of success, growth. And let's be honest, most speakers will say this, problem equals opportunity, right? Because it's true, it's time-honored truth. Um, little magnets on the refrigerator, there's no such thing as a problem without a gift for you and it's solving, which is beautiful. And th that's great, but I'm a pragmatist. I'm like, okay, that's great. How? How does problem literally turn into opportunity? It's you and it's me when we change. We then lead the way, and the problem becomes opportunity. I believe that every one of us is, is, is unbelievably creative. And I still get people some, come up to me sometimes, and they'll say, you know, I heard what you said about everybody's creative. I'm not really creative. It's just not my thing. I'm not worried about it. It's just not my thing. And this is politically incorrect, but I'm going to say it even in this room. Most of them work with numbers. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> And it's patently false. And I'm going to be, get on my soapbox for just a second. Not only are we all creative, we're all unbelievable. We are each a creative genius. I have a book called What If that sums up that everything that I'm teaching and sharing with you today. The first words in the book are, you are a genius. I don't say that at a motivational speak. I say it because I genuinely believe that. I've seen that. It's true. We're just genius in different ways. We're just creative in different ways. And my suspicion is that our way of being creative stuck out as a little different, so we squelched it. And I'm saying, you know what? You were created that way for a reason. Let's use that. Tap into it. That's a strength. Richard Bach once wrote, here's a test to see if your purpose in life is over. If you're alive, it isn't. That means it's a profound and a divine and a wonderful reason that we're all here in these seats whatever, with whatever's going on in our lives. Talk about motivation. People call me a motivational speaker. It's like, okay, let's talk about how do we motivate ourselves and the people around us? Almost always two things that work in tandem, and they're never mentioned up here, by the way. Okay, good. And I, I'm going to sum up every conference you'll ever attend for the rest of your life in one sentence. It's ways to get you to do stuff. Okay? And we learn exciting new ways to do stuff. And we write them down, and we get handouts, and we get PowerPoints, and we go home, and they go in a file or a drawer, and we go right back to doing it the same two ways that are never mentioned up here, but I'll tell you what they are. Reward and punishment. That's how we do it. Reward, you get more money. Punishment, you get fired. AF in school. That's reward and punishment, right? It's the way we've been doing it forever. And I'm not shooting it down. I just want to offer some perspective on it. This is the exact same way that we train mice. Puts you in perspective, doesn't it? What sets us apart as human beings is our ability to respond to the most powerful motivational force on this planet. And it's not power, money, or fame. It's a sense of purpose. Why we do what we do means everything to us as human beings. The meaning behind it. The reason that we attach to it. If there's a meaning and there's a reason for the way we spend our time, Think about the way you spend your time. Just in general, sum it all up and answer this question to yourself. Are you driving with the brakes on? In some area? My suspicion is that the answer is yes. It may not be, but I know it is for me. I'll just confess that. It's, that's why I have to teach this, because I need to remember it. Because I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. And it's a push-pull with the brakes that causes us to move sideways, and I don't want that for you. So the third tool is the way to take the brakes off, and it is simply this. Become a virtuoso. 
16 years ago, I was in a position where I was doing pretty well as a guitarist and comedian. I was getting bookings. I was winning some awards. And I have a mentor friend who said, that's great. Have you resolved to be the best? And he meant like my personal best, not compared to anyone else. And I was like, dude, uh, dude, that's guitar player talk. <laughs> dude, I'm doing pretty well here. And he was like, dude, that's not what I asked you. Have you resolved to be the best? And I started thinking about it. And the answer knocked me over. No, I had not. Here I was doing what I feel like I've been put on the planet to do. And because it's working, I was coasting. Turns out, most of us are coasting in some important area of our life. And here's the problem with coasting. It only happens downhill. <laughs> so it was that day that I made the, the decision that changed everything. But I personalized it, and I wanted to expand it, because I see the art in every part of life. I made the choice to become a virtuoso. A virtuoso in the art or music world is someone who has dedicated his or her life, who's achieved a level of mastery and skill supreme. And I'm not saying that I am a virtuoso. What I'm saying is I have definitively chosen to be on that path. And what I've found from the clients and people that I've worked with is that the greatest payoff in life, the greatest growth in prosperity and everything else happens between competent and virtuoso. The op opposite of virtuoso isn't failure. The opposite of virtuoso is competent. There are many competent people. There are precious few virtuosos. Oh, sure. As a presenter, you want to hear, hey, you were the highlight of the conference. But to me, that's just the price of admission. What I really want to hear is you impacted our group. We're going to do business differently because of your presentation. I want to create bankable results. I want you to open up the possibilities because they're there. They're right in front of you by asking the question, what if? What if I could do that? What will we, oh, I know it's crazy, but what if we did this? How would it work? From those possibilities, choose one. Write music that you can't play. Goals that just empower you, that make you feel excited. And to make that goal happen, to make everything else in the ha happen that you want to, to, to truly serve your clients, make the choice to become a virtuoso, your personal best.